It's three minutes after six o'clock. Welcome to the Fred McNair Radio Show. You're on the Alcorn Football Radio Network, WAZA in Liberty, V105.5 in Vicksburg, WMIS, WTYJ in Natchez, WGDQ in Hattiesburg, and here on the beautiful campus, the flagship station of the Alcorn Football Radio Network, WPRL 91.7 FM. Charles Edmond here, Braves head football coach Fred McNair. Good evening and congratulations, coach. Good evening, Charles, and congratulations to you too, man. Keisha is here with the tweets. Smile as always. Good evening, Keisha. Hello. Keisha says hello. So the gang's all here. Jamario Brooks over in Studio A. Give us a call, 601-877-6595, 601-877-6595. have a few tweets that have come in, so we'll get to those as we roll along here. Well, Coach, it's been a long journey, starting with the football signing party, getting your staff assembled, spring practice, summer conditioning, all practice, the season, and now just another step in the process. You got to win the Eastern Division to get to where you need to go, and we've accomplished at least step one. And that's right, Charles. I mean, I, I tell you, um, we have overcome a lot of stuff through this whole season, man, and to uh, to to be able to put ourselves in a position now to to win another SWAC championship has been very good. You know, uh, starting another year, we having a lot of rain, and and you're losing a lot of seniors. Um, you know, um, eight on offense and. And, and seven on defense, and, and you're talking about people that can really contribute to this team this year that we didn't have. Um, and that says a lot about this character, this team. That even though we have our head all against us, we fought through adversity and we we bring along. I think the coaching staff did a tremendous job of uh, putting the kids in a position to make plays and, and getting them to understand the concept of everything that we've been through this whole season. And uh, you know, we never made an excuse about anything. We always talk about the next man up and. Uh, and that's what you know. You have to understand about this program uh, that we're building here at Alcorn uh, this year, and, and hopefully in the future, that we continue to do it to build the way we want to build it. And uh, you know, after over all those things that we overcome, you know, we're still here um, and contend for another swag championship. We did what we had to do, Coach, and we knew we had to be valid. Well, we didn't have to, but then some other things would have to happen out of our control. We handled our business and. Alabama A&M beat Jackson State, therefore, in a worst-case scenario, three-way tie, and we went out. So, you know, regardless of what happens on Saturday, we will go to Houston. And we had to handle our own business, and we knew Valley was going to be tough, but scoring over 60 points, I know that's something you probably said to yourself, wow. You know, the, the team being focused all week, Charles, and had a good week of practice and, and things like that, and, and knowing that we control our own destiny, you know, I think the team will really realize that, and I think that, we played, a, we played a, not a perfect ball game, but we played the way we need to on all phases of the game to, to come out victoriously in that fashion, you know. And uh, you always um, you always want a, um, a game like that. And, uh, you know, going into a, a big game as such as this Jackson State week, you know, carry the momentum into it. And, uh, and the kids, I think they will this week. You know, you don't have to do a lot for this game, um, you know, preparation-wise. The kids know the magnitude of this ball game, and, and they expect to do great things this week. All right, let's get into the highlights. Give us a call, 601-877-6595. As we roll the highlights here, the Braves' first drive started at their own 30-yard line. Noah Johnson threw a pick here, Coach McNair, on the first play, and I know that's something uh, that talked about the turnovers. The ball was batted at the line and picked off and almost returned for a touchdown. That's a run pass option there. You know, we, we try to run the inside zone, but, you know, we just I read, took us to the pass, and, um, you know, Noah threw it at the defensive end, Kyle fell off and, and uh, knocked it up in the air. But we still have to go back and try to fight for that ball and, uh, and keep it from being intercepted. At least knock it down. So uh, we didn't do that, so we turned the ball over right there. First down, play fake pass, batted in the air, intercepted. Oh, intercepted at the 35, this time the 30. Down to the 20, inside the 20 to the 17. Yeah. That ball batted in the air, picked off by Jordan Freeman, the outside linebacker. So the Delta Devils had it first down. Valley at the Braves 30 yard line. Charmin to Banks for 15 yards. The Braves defense stiffened and when it's third down and six right here. First down, play fake pass batted in the air. Inter oh, that was the wrong. All right, here we go. Field three left, two right. Third and six from the 16 of all corner in this scoreless game. Charmin back to pass. Here comes the pressure. Wow! And this is picked off in the end zone. It's picked off in the end zone and the Braves will get it at the 20. 
So that time, Ely came up with the pick. So our defense, we've been what we've been coming up with some interceptions. Prairie View and now Valley. So our secondary really rounding out. And that's the thing that we look at, you know, through the whole year, Charles, and and that the way the secondary been playing, and now um, they're coming in the world of their own right now and making plays for us on the, on the back end of everything. And I think those guys are are starting to really come together in the secondary there for us and uh, and making plays and getting interception for us. And that's one of the things that. That I challenge each and every one of them on you know, during the pregame um, talk that you know we need to create turnovers. So the brain started at the one yard line. We thought maybe it would be a touchback, but we got it at the one, so that was tough to start. Yeah, it was a tough start there. You know, you always we always talk about going in, and you know we we always praise on 99 yard drive. You know, and it, it makes us look good as an offense the way we take the ball and drive it down the field and score. So we started at our one, was third and six from the five to Lance Turner, a 15-yard run to Valley's 40-yard line. And as the drive continued, the Braves were faced with a third down and 18. Play action for Noah Johnson. Good pocket, steps up, going to lob this one long, deep downfield. And this ball is caught. Oh, Lord, Lord, Triple team, and it was caught by yeah. Orlando Veals. Well, that was a tremendous catch with three guys draped all over him. And that's the thing that, you know, we talked to uh, the quarterback, you know, uh, all week about, you know, giving the receivers a chance to, to make a play for him. And, and that's exactly what he did. He had a good throw on the ball, and, and Bills made a play on it. So we uh, ended up getting the first down off that. So it was first down and, and goal. Then it was third down and goal from the 12. The last turn to the right of Noah Johnson. Stretch play to the right. Noah looks. is going to lob it. Ah, and it's bobble. Touchdown. Touchdown. He caught the ball. It's just a matter of what that side just said. Well, there's no question he caught the ball. Nice catch, a 99-yard drive, and uh, Orlando feels a terrific day. Seven-play, 99-yard drive with 7:20 left in the first quarter. Well, that's always big for us, Charles. When you when you when you, can, when you can do a drive like that and and uh, methodically just take the ball and drive it down a team uh, like that is big for us. And um, you know we just got to be more consistent of it and and doing all the right things and what we need to do to make those plays. So the Braves jumped out on top, seven and nothing. Valley first and ten from their own twenty-three yard line. Valley's going to a single safety to try to do something, get more people down in that stop that run. Here's Noah Johnson with the keeper. Noah inside the ten, inside the five, and he scores. Got so the Braves led fourteen and nothing at that point. It was a three-play, fifty-four yard drive. Yeah, that's just a basic read for Noel, and uh, he's been doing that all year for us when he's playing, uh, making the proper reads on outside zone play, and I think he did a tremendous job of reading it and, and getting it in zone. The next drive for the Braves started at their 45-yard line, got to the Delta Devils 38, where it was third down and eight. Noah Johnson back to pass. Going to lob this one deep downfield. Beals with the catch, dies in for the touchdown. So that made it 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Defense got a pick, and the offense with the exception of that first play, kind of got it rolling. And that's what you want, Charles. You want you want the defense to make stop, and of course you want the offense to take it to score. And that's basically what we did. We kind of traded out with the defense, and and they making stops, and we scoring touchdowns. And uh, you know, being consistent that way, you know, I think that it means a lot to this uh, football team the way we do it like that. And uh, you know, just done a tremendous job the, the whole ball game that way. 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Let's go to the phone lines at 11 minutes after six o'clock. Marquis calling from. Port Gibson, good evening. Good evening. Uh, how you doing, Coach? How you doing, Marquis? Uh, right, uh, what about them Braves? Yeah, how about them Braves, man? Yeah, yeah, I came with that piece of the Uh, do you have a question? Uh, I had a question, uh, and he was in North Point, but me. No, not right now. We're just taking it day by day, and uh, we got another doctor visit up. Visit coming up pretty soon, so right now it's a day by day thing with him, and, and hopefully he can heal up real fast and uh, get back on the gridiron. We're just going to play it close and, uh, and see how it works. Yeah, I hope y'all be based off All right, man, so appreciate it. All right. All right, thank you for your call from Port Gibson right up the road. We'll take a time out here. You can give us a call, 601 877 6595. We'll take our first break, and we'll be right back, Keisha, with some tweets. And uh, we'll get to the second quarter highlights in one minute on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Final regular season home game of the year is Saturday, November 19th, when the Braves host Jackson State. The All Four State University ticket office is introducing a new, more convenient way for Braves sports fans to get their game day tickets. It's called Quick Clicks, which allows Braves fans to secure tickets online or on any mobile device. Unlike other ticketing services, Quick Clicks allows you to purchase tickets without any additional 
fee. Once purchased, the tickets will be available for will call the day of the event. An email confirming your ticket purchase will be sent to your email address. The great thing about Quick Clicks is not only for Braves football games, it's for all sports. So don't hesitate to use the new service so that you can support all of the Braves sports events. Be sure to use Quick Clicks to purchase Braves tickets for the final home game of the year, Saturday, November 19th. Braves take on Jackson State. For more information, call 601-877-6822 or 877-6823. All right, welcome back. 13 minutes after the hour. Got a bunch of tweets that have come in. Keisha's dissecting those, so let's get to some of them. Keisha. Okay, we have several um, from, well, a, a few from just one person. Uh, Tay Joda tweeted, What's um what's going on on the recruiting trail and are we looking at a lot from uh JUCO? Well, right now we're still uh, we're still in the process. We've been out on visits and uh, visiting high schools uh, during uh, during the time we can go out and just checking out some kids and, and we are looking into the JUCOs, of course, you know, trying to trying to get some more veterans leaders in uh, in, in some of those positions. But um, I think recruiting right now is going pretty good for us. Uh, we had some kids that to commit and uh, you know uh, early and that, and that's always big for us and uh, you know we just got to just continue to go out and, and reach out to the old players that we really need uh, in um, in those positions. Okay, and another tweet from Tay Jody. He said Butler and Spearman ran well on Saturday. Um, do you plan to mix them in more packages for the remaining games? Well, right now, you know, um, you know, we're just going to keep things consistent and, 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 and do what those guys are, are capable of doing, uh, what they're comfortable with in offense. And, uh, you know, they're going to run hard every time you give them the ball, and, and that's, what we, that's what we look for them to do, you know, every time they touch the ball it, is to run hard. So we'll, we'll continue to make things work the way it needs to and, and prepare them, you know, for the next ball game, you know. Uh, and that's just the way we, our offense is designed and, and uh, just keeping old guys up and giving, us, giving, uh, giving the older guys um, – uh, a little more break in, in those kind of games. And um, another tweet from Tay Joda, he wants to know how big of an impact has Javon Morrison uh, had on the defense? Javon has been pretty good. I mean, uh, he been, he, he's a freshman coming in and starting. He, he, he had a pick against Southern. Uh, you know, he played great against them, and, and he continued to play that way. He's a very smart player. Uh, you know, Coach Thomas talks about him all the time. How tentative he is in the uh, in the in the meeting rooms, and he asks a lot of questions. And then anytime you get a player like that, that really that really um, can go in and, and watch film on his own and, and do all those things to get better himself. You got a very good football player. All right, Keisha. We'll get to some of the other tweets. We have a bunch of them this week, so we'll get to as many of them as we can. We want to get to all the scores, of course. So we get into the second quarter. Coach Fred McNair Valley started at their own. 29-yard line, and they had a third down and six. Three back to pass, looks, throws, back shoulder, throws. Diego Sama with the pick! Yes, sir. Had him covered all the way. I'm, I'm happy for Sama. Diego Sama transformed into a quarterback, back shoulder throw, poor throw intended for Sims. And Diego Sama with the pick. How about that, Cedric Tillman? We've been waiting for that. We've been waiting for that. You've been waiting for that, I'll Coach. I'll tell you what, when the, when the year first started, you know, everybody have a testimony, Charles, and I think he's have a, he have a, he have a great one uh, in himself, man, the way he bounced back off the injury that he had and, and uh, all the things that he'd been through as a young man, um, even in the bethune Cookman ball game uh, where he had a touchdown caught on him and then come back and he dropped an interception in that ball game. Yeah. And, and then just to come back and, and fight through all the adversity of uh, not being a starter anymore and then still coming back and uh, practice the way you have been and, and just dedicate yourself to that position, I think, you know, that was very big for him. And finally, you know, uh, Coach Thomas got him to do the things he'd been telling him to do all year is uh, turn and, and turn around and catch the football. And that's what he did. Um, great, great, great individual effort by him. You know, when you look at him coming in, you know, a lot of fanfare, and of course, he, he, he really hurt himself on a special teams play his first year, the first couple of weeks of his first camp, just staying with it. And I'm always impressed with individuals who, even when their backs are against the wall, just kind of grind it out and stay with it, transform from one side of the ball to the next. So going through all that, staying with it, 
being knocked down, picking yourself back up, uh, that's a great testimony. And, and this is a guy, Charles, that, 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 that kind of Googled his injury and uh, was Googling how to treat it and how to come back and do rehab sometime on his own. Wow. This is a guy that want to get back on the football field, and and um, and uh, he did. And uh, you know, throughout everything that he was doing, you know, being on a crutch and and all that kind of stuff, and and, and I'm watching him walk without the crutch at an early stage of it, and uh, I'm saying, Samo, what are you doing? He said, Coach, I, I googled and he said I can get off the crutch and all this kind of stuff and such. Time. So it's a testimony for him, I charge, and he, he got a good one. So with uh, that pick by Diego Sama. The Braves first and 10 from Valley's 48 got to the Delta Devils 23, where it was third down and five. Noah Johnson looks, a high fade, and this ball is oh. caught. Touchdown, boy, the wide receivers looking good. Collins Moore with the touchdown from 23 yards out. So after that first uh, play, the offense really getting it rolling. I think that was four of the next five possessions we were able to score, so we're up 28 to nothing. You know, and uh, Coach Shannon had done a great job with those receivers, Charles, and, and Barr, you, you're missing Charles Hughes, you're missing Tip McKenzie, you're missing Marquise Warford, you're missing our tight end, uh, Brandon Campbell, those kind of guys that, that that's not even playing right now because of the injury, but still we're able to to overcome everything that we've been through, Charles, and, and the receivers are fighting every day and working hard every day to get better, and, and it shows this ball game how how, how how we can be if we just play football. So it's 28 to nothing at that point. Valley three and out. After a seven-yard punt, the Braves start at the Delta Devils 35. Spearman for 19 yards to Valley 16. Second down and 10 right here. On second down, play action for Noah Johnson. Rolling, rolling. Throws, check down, catch, and it's going to be a touchdown. Ladarian Davis. So that's a 16-yard catch. It was 35 to nothing with three minutes left in the first half. Valley's next drive started at their own 16, got their own 44-yard line. Then we had a pick six. Coach, talk a little bit about that. And as we had a convoy set up for the touchdown, a pick six. Uh, we talked about that in the uh, in the meeting room earlier, and, uh, and that's one of the things that you know when you when you apply pressure as a defensive line and you make the quarterback throw the ball sooner than they want to throw it. So I think that interception come from defensive line putting pressure on the quarterback and, and him getting rid of the ball early than he want to. And, and Javon Morrison did a great job of going up and get it and, and with a combo down the sideline scoring. So that was really big. Gray back to pass. And this ball's intercepted. Under throw, picked off down to the 50, 45. A combo in front of him. Into the 40, to the 30. Yeah, the offensive lineman can't catch it. And it's going to go all the way for the touchdown. 64 yards, and it was 41 to nothing, Coach Fred McNair, at the half. They're trying to think, you know, everything was going well for us, and, uh, you know, we were playing football the way we wanted to play it, you know, that whole first half there. So, uh, you know, I just think we just continue to play that way in the second half and, and make it easier for us, you know, just the way we play uh, offensive and defensive. And, you know, the special team showed up. Uh, they did not have anything really big on us in special team. Um, so we try to keep the ball in from those guys that make those big plays on special team. And I think we did a good job of doing that when I kick off. So we'll take a break here. We'll get back to the tweets. Third quarter highlights coming up. Give us a call, 601-877-6595. The Braves three straight Eastern Division titles and will play for all the swag marbles December the 3rd against either Southern or Grambling. Southern, and Larry Sanders, who shoots it on YouTube for us, is a Southern guy, Southern grad. So, you know, he's not, he's not happy tonight <laughs> as the uh, Jaguars were eliminated. Uh, well, the Jaguars stay alive, though. Jaguars, stay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. Jaguars <laughs> stay alive for right now. They, uh, they've got the Bayou Classic coming up. Uh, Preview is eliminated, my mistake. Preview eliminated with that loss. And now it's going to come down to the Bayou Classic. And a lot of people think that could be one of the biggest Bayou Classics in a while. That game was kind of on the edge of the cliff, you know, down to 40,000 in attendance and folks wondering, do is the Bayou Classic needed? Yes, it's needed, and I think it's going to be a great crowd for the Bayou coming up Southern and Grambling for all the marbles. Grambling still has Texas Southern to go, so some uh, intrigue there. So we'll take a break, and we'll be right back with the highlights of the third quarter as the Braves up 41 nothing at the break. we get some more tweets. We'll look at Jackson State later. Back in one minute on the Prairie Big Radio Show. This will be 
sounds of dynamite. Get out your phone now and join and donate. Let's help take the sounds to new decibels. This year, the SOD Club is sponsoring an instrument drive for the sound. Your membership or donation to the SOD Club will help us make new instruments a reality for our renowned day. Please visit www.sodclub.org. The SOD Club has contributed over $40,000 to the band. All memberships and donations are tax deductible. The SOD Club providing unwavering support to the All Ford State University Marching Band Program. At highway speeds, the average text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds. That's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop texts, stop rex.org. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. At WRL 91.7 FM. All right, 23 minutes after 6 o'clock. I hope some of the Southern folks don't uh, send me some nasty messages saying I'm thinking the Jaguars are done and they are far from it. It's going to come down to the Bayou Classic. Preview eliminated. It's a two-horse race there with uh, Southern and Grambling. Grambling beating um, Alabama State just 21 to nothing. A lot of folks thought it would be a bigger margin than that. Tell you what, that Bama State team has had some close losses, Coach, and we'll be talking a little bit more in our next segment. But Bama State, A&M playing well. They've beaten Jackson State, I think, the third year in a row. So the Eastern Division, for all that said about the West, you know, we had to get it done in the East because Jackson State was right there. A&M was right there. Bama State was right there. When we beat Valley, we eliminated both Bama State and A&M, regardless of what they did. But those two teams, you're kind of finding themselves late. It's been a battle with the little two teams that are charged, and they, they, they've they been good and um, you know throughout the past years. And, and they find themselves in a situation now where they really can't compete. So, you know, um, we just have to just do what we have to do to kind of step above those guys and prepare our kids and, and not recruit them. Um, really the biggest thing is and make sure we're getting the best kids out there for all course State University. We'll talk more about that in the next segment as we get into these third quarter highlights. In the third, the Braves started at their own 38-yard line, got to their own 49. Where was first down and 10? Three plays, 62 yards, 48 to nothing at that point. 13.50 left in the third quarter. Valley three and out. Uh, the first drive started in the third quarter after a 38-yard punt. The Braves started at their own 48 with 11.12 left in the third. Spearman for no gain. And on this highlight, we pick it up second down and 10. On second down, play action. Here's a pass caught in Orlando Fields. A missed tackle to the 30, 25-20, 15-10, 5, touchdown. 52 yards in Orlando Fields. That may be his fourth touchdown of the day. Now, we look at Valley's defense. I mean, we're doing what we want to do on offense. But what was the challenge when you look at Valley's defense and us trying to get some things going? Well, the biggest thing is, Charles, we, 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 we um, schematically, you know, we look at our defense during the week and, and we try to scheme up the, the things that they're doing around um, their defense. And I think schematically, you know, for the running game and, and the passing game, that we knew what they was going to be in. And uh, we just had to just take advantage of what they're going to be in. And, and that's every week. We try to look for those those little things on film that give us, an, give us a little edge um, in our passing game and our running game. So at the end of the third quarter, it was 54 to nothing at that point with 10 minutes left in the third. Then we added another touchdown to make it 61 to nothing. All right, so we're going to talk about some of the other guys that got involved. But just give us your thoughts on what you saw through the first uh, three quarters. We're up big. Hopefully not to get a whole bunch of folks hurt or anybody hurt at that point, but just trying to play as many people as you can. And that's the biggest thing, Charles. You, you always try to get guys experience that, that don't really play a lot that you may need down the line. And, and um, being up by that margin now, we, we try to get some guys in that we could see, you know, in a tight end situation um, with Demetrius Lewis and um, Ajimobi, you know, coming along and just trying to get those guys in. And they play a lot already, but just to, keep, just to kind of see where those guys at at the tight end position because both of them at the early of the year, both of them had cast on. So uh, Demetri Lewis, he was able to catch a touchdown pass in late in the, late in the fourth quarter, there, in the third quarter. Um, I think the last touchdown was Demetri Lewis on the catch. So, you know, the old guys like that and, and on the defensive side of the ball, we played a lot of guys up front, gave them some experience and, and uh, the secondary kind of stayed the same because we're so short back in the back end now. So we kind of more consistent back there in the back end where Got those guys had to stay in 
Uh, but the defensive line, linebacker position, where we look at some young guys, that's going to be able to help us next year. All right, it's 28 minutes after. We approach the bottom of the hour. Let's go back to the phone lines. Cedric calling from Tallahassee. Good evening, Cedric. Hey, good evening. And first thing I want to say to you, Coach, congratulations. Uh, thank you, Cedric. Uh, congratulations. I am so happy about that. Uh, I, I, I guess I got just kind of a couple of questions and comments. I know the big rival game is this Saturday. I know you're doing everything in your power to not – let the kids have a letdown since we know we're going to Houston because, you know, that can happen. You know, they'll let down, hey, we know we're going to Houston, and uh, and they just kind of, uh, I hope they don't lay down because this is a big rival game, and plus it's a home game too, so I know you're doing everything in your power to just keep everybody up. Coach, I, 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 I wish I could make the Houston game, but my, my grandbaby, it's my first and only grandbaby has the birthday. <laughs> that, that Saturday, boy, I tell you, I, I told my wife, I, 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 I tried to get my daughter to switch it, but she, no, I can't do that, I can't do it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully we can we can get past Houston and, and uh, we'll, will we be able to go to Atlanta uh, or what? Oh, yeah, most definitely. <laughs> okay, okay, I didn't, I didn't know for sure. Oh, but, yeah. If we, if we get past that, um, hopefully, I get, you know, I definitely be in Atlanta. Coach, I guess my question is, if you had a choice between the two, because I know you want get, to get back on both of those two, which one would you rather deal with, uh, Southern or, or Bramlin? Uh, I just hang up and listen to you. All right, Cedric, thank you. Well, right now, Cedric, it's a blessing that, you know, we're able to make it back to Houston, man, and, and uh, we we, we, we going to – we just gonna pray and and um, right now we just gonna have to prepare for both of them. Um, you know when the time comes, but we just gonna take this game with Jackson uh, full force, man, and, and try to focus in on that. And um, if you can come back next week and ask me that question, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I mean, he made an interesting point. Getting by Jackson State. Remember two years ago when Jackson came here, we had an 11 point lead with four minutes left and a first down away from winning the game. And we know what happened. Jackson came, Ivy came in off, off the pine after knocking him out of the game. He came back in the game, and uh, Dan Williams with a touchdown catch, and Jackson State rolled out of here with a win. So I don't know if that's been talked about in the last few days, but uh, you definitely want to take your foot off the gas. Well, the biggest thing is, Charles, that uh, we talked about it early in our meeting. And, uh, you know, the kids know the magnitude of this football game, and, and uh, we talked about the, the outcome of that game as well. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we had a big letdown, and, and Jackson State maybe come back and, and beat us. Uh, but the biggest thing is that I talked to the kids about how well can you have a success, and um, I talked to them about that in the meeting, you know, because game against Fowler, you know, everybody's cheering you on and telling you how well you play, but now you got to come back and play a real good Jackson State football game um, here at home. So, you know, we're gonna try to push these kids and make sure they stay focused on the task at hand, and you know, that's uh, a Saturday at two o'clock against Jackson. Kermit standing by in Dallas. We'll get to Kermit on the other side of this timeout. We'll get to the tweets as well. 601-877-6595. Jackson was inches away for perhaps staying in it themselves, but they fumbled at the goal line and lost the game by seven. We'll take a one-minute break, and we'll be right back on the Freya McNair Radio Show. All Corn State University football thanks to 2016 members of the 1871 Club. Thank you so much to these great donors of Alcorn Football 2016. For more information on how you can become a member and a premier supporter of Braves Football, contact Larry Smith, Director of Athletic Development at 601-443-1881 or send him an email to lsmith at alcorn.edu. All right, it's the bottom of the hour. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Alcorn Football Radio Network. You are tuned in to WPRL 91.7 FM and 
97.7 FM, broadcasting from the campus of Alcorn State University. All right, the Fred McNair Radio Show here on this Monday night. Keisha Shelby with the tweets, Jamario Brooks in Studio A, Larry Sanders with the video on YouTube, Charles Edmond, Braves Head Football Coach Fred McNair. I want to remind everyone, basketball season is underway. The Lady Braves played uh, Grand Canyon in Arizona last night. The Lady Braves lost by 15 at Arizona. They are on their way home right now, and on Thursday at 5.30, they will host Central Arkansas here at the Whitney Arena. We'll have that ball game right here on the ASU Sports Network. Dave Crosby will have the call at 5.30. And then on Friday, the men will play Concordia College at 7 o'clock, and we'll have that game as well. So we'll have basketball Thursday, basketball Friday, football on Saturday, Fred McNair Show next Monday night, and then basketball next Tuesday. So football, basketball intertwined here on this late November and Thanksgiving weekend coming up. All right, Keisha, uh, some more tweets have come in uh, about the Lenora's Footman. Yes, we have a tweet from Alexis Smith. Um, she said, I think Noah should be the quarterback for the rest of the way if Footman can get back to 100%. Yeah, we talked about that. You know, I think Footman, he's on the, he's on the edge of getting everything back. He got another visit. Uh, just to see how well he's uh, he's doing uh, next week, and and uh, you know I think Noah is doing a great job for us. You know, uh, you know his time has come, and you know like I said, next man up. That's what we always talk about, and uh, we don't make excuses. We just pull out the next one. We go with it. So uh, that's what we do here at Allcorn now. So uh, you know we just the chance that you know, Noah get healthy, and and if he's 100, percent you know there's a chance he could come back. All right, we appreciate that. Let's go to the phone calls. Uh, let's go to Kermit in Dallas. I know Kermit said he's not a Cowboys fan, but you can't help but talk about those Cowboys. They beat the Steelers, <laughs> and rookie quarterback that Prescott. Hey, I'm not a Cowboys fan either, but you have to be impressed with what's going on in Big D. I know Emmanuel Barnes is, is a big Cowboys fan. You know he's all smiles here on this Monday night. Good evening, Kermit. Well, Charles, it's not that I'm not a Cowboy fan. <laughs> it's that I can't stand Ole Miss or Mississippi State. Oh, okay. So, I'm sorry. That's how it is over there. Hey, hey, Fred, I just want to tell you congratulations. And, um, you know, I'm one of these kind of people, Fred. I'm one of them I told you so, people. So, I think, Fred, when you and I talked about three weeks ago, and I told you what was going to happen. I told you that you were going to that you were going to win the East on there. And I said, you're going to get into and you're going to get some of those people healthy that you didn't have healthy before, which you're getting a few of them back. I know you won't get all of them back. And I don't care whether it's Graveland or Southern. They ain't going to know what hit them <laughs> in the SWAG championship. But anyway, man, I just want to say of all the adversity you've gone through this year, I just want to congratulate you on the year you had. Um, I know Fred has been tough on you this year because everybody looking at what that previous guy did who was there before you, and they were comparing you to him. And, oh, you know, you know, he left Fred with all this. Well, Fred, you know, people can say what he left you with, but you had to take that group and put it together and put them where they are. So I just want to say congratulations on what you did. I appreciate you, Kevin. Thanks a lot, man. Sure. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you for calling in. All right, uh, the Braves win 61-7 to over Valley. If you look at uh, some of the numbers in the ball game, Coach, uh, 282 yards passing, the running game 323 yards on the ground. That's Braves football, you know, over 600 yards of a total offense in the game. So you're proud of the offensive effort. What, what impressed you about the defensive effort? We had a shutout going to the last minute and a half. Well, the biggest thing is, Charles, is those guys are finally uh, coming around and, and playing football now. You know, you look at the film uh, on Sunday and you kind of evaluate the kids on Sunday and you don't see the same mistakes they've been making uh, in the past. And uh, that's what we look at and, and making sure the guys uh, being more consistent in, in gap integrity, uh, controlling their gaps, and uh, containing the quarterback, which we did. We knew number four was going to run around in the pocket and try to pass it. So we uh, we got that done. So in the secondary, we're looking for turnovers. We got that done. So uh, the linebackers on blitz, you know, we kind of blitzed and got that done. So those are the things that, that we have to look for and uh, be more consistent in doing. And uh, I think that we got that done and we didn't see the same some of the same mistakes that we always seen in the past. Well, uh, Noah Johnson, 11 of 15 for 282 yards. Orlando Fields, four receptions for 196 yards and three touchdowns. 
you look at the Braves receiving core, I mean, despite Hughes going down, despite Tip McKenzie going down, we've got a stable of receivers. And we talked with the we talked with the Braves wide receiver coach Shannon Harris on the pregame show. It seems like I don't know what they're doing, but they're catching balls in tough windows, going up and getting ball at the highest point, you know, scooping them up, whatever it takes, they're getting after the football. And you know the biggest thing in charge with that, you know, those guys practice that every day. Um, you know, he don't change the routine of what he do. And uh, sometimes the kids question, Coach, why we kind of continue to do the same thing every day, just for those sole purpose that you kind of get better what you do. And, uh, and I think Coach Shannon did a great job with those guys and, and growing those guys up as receivers and, and, um, and making those guys mature and nice, those guys where they need to be as receivers. Then you look at the, in the backfield, Silas Spearman with almost 100 yards, 94 yards running the football, the Lance Turner with 75. Let's talk about Darius Dean. We have Darius Dean sighting on Saturday. We've seen him the last couple of years. Just talk about uh, Darius Dean as a whole. Well, Darius Dean, that wasn't Darius Dean that was playing. That was uh, Quay Butler, the running back Quay. He's a, he's a, he's a, actually he's a Juco walk on for us. And, uh, he keep come in and do a, do a great job, did a great job for us in the place of Darius Dean. That's another guy that's out for the season, Darius Dean. Um, you know, he's been hurt with his knee, so uh, still, that, you know, that stable of running backs that we had with, with Baker, Darius Dean, Turner, and Spearman, you know, it's been kind of cut short now. So we having to put together some pieces there that, that you know, just giving guys a chance to play that, that don't normally get a chance to play if those guys are hurt with the Marquis Wofford. The uh, Darius Deans and and the Baker guys like that, you know. So this guy, he's a newcomer, and uh, and he run the ball hard. He's been practicing well, and, and I think the coach guy's done a great job with him getting them guys some opportunity to play. Talk about Aaron Baker. Speaking of the running game, we did not see Aaron Baker on Saturday. What is the status going forward? Well, we're still working with Aaron in the training room, and I think that the the length of his injuries, I think, is a little bit severer than we thought it was, and you know, just give him some break and some rest, and, and still treat him. Uh, will only make it better for him. And, uh, you know, if we get that guy healthy, you know, we probably won't play this week. And, uh, you know, just get him healthy and hopefully, you know, with the long stretch in between the, the championship game, we may be able to get him back for that. Talk about Shippy on the defensive side. He had eight tackles. Stacy Garner, we know what he's done. Seven tackles. Darren Anderson with six. But uh, talk about Shippy and what he brings to the defense. Well, actually, Shippy was here with us last year, Charles, but he, he, he decided not to come back. For the sole purpose of everything that, and uh, but he's done a tremendous job. I think Coach Stewart has done a great job with that defensive line, getting those guys where they at right now. Um, got some veterans there, but you know we're still we're still young with the with the depth of those guys. But I think Coach Stewart has done a great job of preparing those guys to play. And I think simply from the first time he played, going from three or four plays now up to like twenty some plays, is very big for us. And um, he's done a great job for us. And uh, hopefully he'll continue to grow. On the special teams front, we had uh, PAT hit the right upright. We had one that was missed. Um, are you concerned at all about our PAT production? Not really. I mean, do, do we had a good win, but I'm not going to make no excuse for Hayden, but he just kind of put him through. Uh, I think the field goal that he missed, kind of the win, kind of got and took it, took it away from the uprights. But, uh, you know, we just got to continue to, to progress on that. And I think Coach Stancheck is – just plugging the pieces in right there as, as, better, as, as good as he can uh, on the extra point and uh, field goal standpoint. But we just got to continue to get better and, and uh, hopefully, you know, things won't come down to that. But, you know, if it do, we'll be, we'll be prepared for it. I'm quite sure we will. Talk about the trip coming home, two and a half hour trip. Uh, of course, a lot of alums in the Delta area checking out Braves football, but just that ride home from Valley. Just talk about how sweet it is. Well, anytime you win on the road, charge and the, the ride back home is a whole lot quicker uh, than when you lose. So you know it was a good ride home. I think the the, the, the player was kind of quiet on the bus. You know they just sit back, just let it all soak in at the time. You know, but you know we have those rides, and um, you know hopefully you know um, we'll continue to, to get better and, and get better at our football program. All right, we'll take this break. Have a bunch of other tweets that we'll get to. And uh, we'll make the turn and get ready for Jackson State. Coach Tony Hughes in his first year at Jackson State. They've lost three games by eight points or less. So they've been right there. We'll take a one-minute break. We'll be right back on the Fred McNair Radio Show. All in all, please for the Lumpus. Every all for the Lumpus is free to be in Jackson, Mississippi 
at the state capitol on Tuesday, February 28, 2017 at 8 a.m. for the annual Purple and Gold Day at the Mississippi Capitol. All four need your support for full funding of our legislative agenda in the 2017 Mississippi Legislative Session. Save the date, Tuesday, February 28, 2017. Join fellow alumni at the Mississippi State Capitol Building in Jackson, Mississippi for Purple and Gold Day. One day, I'll teach chemistry to kids. I'm going to be an architect. My dream is to be a chef. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we provide more than $150 billion each year in grants, loans, and work-study funds, making higher education possible for anyone at any stage of life. I can go back to college. I can change careers. I can make a difference. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. All right, welcome back. 43 minutes after. Glad you can join us on the All Corn Football Radio Network. Don't forget the final home game of the regular season is Saturday at All Corn and Jackson State from Jack Spinks Marino Casim Stadium. Commemorate a special occasion or make an announcement with a personal message on the video board at Jack Spinks Marino Casim Stadium. The cost is $200 per message for All Corn students, faculty, and staff, $250 with graphic or live. $250 per message for all corn season ticket holders, $350 with graphic or live video, and $400 per message for non all corn season ticket holders, $500 with graphic or live video. For more information, call 601 877 6296 or you can send the foundation an email the foundation at allcorn.edu. You still have time to get your message on the video board for the final home game of the year. All right, we have some more tweets that have come in. Keisha. I have a tweet from Mr. T. He said, um, this was perhaps the best game all season and it was well deserved. Um, how are you keeping the team focused and what is the plan to contain Dan Williams uh, at JSU? Because he has been a big threat on their offense. Well, you know, just preparation all week, you know, and, uh, and, and the kids know the magnitude of this football game. And uh, like I told them today, I mean, it shouldn't take the coaching staff to, to get you guys up for this ball game because you know what kind of game this is and what kind of game is going to be presented to you on Saturday. And so, uh, you know, the defensive staff is going to do a great job of, of um, scheming up the plays to, to, to hold this guy contained. So, you know, you always can just slow a guy down, but you can't really stop him. So, you know, that's the best of them. And uh, I think Coach Thomas and his staff on that side of the ball will do a tremendous job of, uh, of, of keeping that guy contained. Okay, um, and Charles, Mr. T also said, kudos to you. You make the games exciting for even for those who are not there. Well, I appreciate that. Just just trying to keep it exciting, and it has been exciting, Coach. I <laughs> uh, appreciate those comments. You know, and I have this conversation with other talk show colleagues, and I'm on talk shows every week. Uh, winning is hard. You know this as a former player and a coach. It's not easy to win. There's so many obstacles, so many hurdles, so much adversity. And despite, and this is kind of a, a criticism for folks who follow SWAC football, we know in the West it's going to be Southern or Grambling. Someone's going to lose one game and not go to Atlanta. But in the East, it was kind of a down season. You know, if things don't go right Saturday, we could be four and five and still go to, to the championship. And someone would say, you got to be kidding. It's kind of a down year. What do you say to those folks who say, hey, the East was just, they just didn't have it this year, and yet someone had to come out of the East and represent and go to Houston, and it was Alcorn. Well, you know, if you look at old games, Charles, and, and just, just take Alcorn, for instance, you know, we, we, we're that close in every ball game. Mm -hmm. and we don't have the turnovers and the mistakes that we have early, and, 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 and bar all the injuries that we had, you know, Charles, we, we could probably win some of those ball games, and, uh, you know, and bar all the injury stuff, but we just have to play uh, a class football game, so we have to build our A game every time we play now because we can't overcome those mistakes uh, as a football team here at All Point right now because of the, the stuff that we got injury wise and all that kind of stuff. But you know, I think the East is still is a competitive league. You know, they, they, they we still doing the things that we need to do to get better. Um, but you know, you went you go um, you go on the field in the East here, and that is big. You know, so. You know, um, just for those people out there that just say the West is the West is the West and, and the East is the East, so that's the way you look at it. For me, um, you only have to win your your side. So, and I think that's what we put forth uh, the effort to do. 
uh, every week to to make sure we put ourselves in a position to win to win the East. I tell you what, teams are getting better in this league, regardless of what people might say, and we've seen them all, with the exception of Jackson State. Jackson State's gotten better. I mean, they lost 14 to seven to Bama State. They fumbled the ball at the one inch line against Alabama A&M. You know, they came back against Southern, made a game of it against Grambling in the third quarter. They were kind of right there after a shaky start. Then you look at what Southern has done. They, you know, a few years ago, Southern was kind of down, but they've been pretty good for a while. Grambling, we know what happened the last few years with the protest and all that. They've gone over leaps and bounds. They're getting better. We know what Prairie View's done. They're getting, but Texas Southern is getting better. So there are some teams that are still trying to figure it out, but for the most part, teams in this league are getting better and better every week and every year, and it's going to be, I think, more of a dogfight in this conference going forward. Oh, it will be, and the, and the biggest thing is that when you lose a lot of seniors in, in one class, that kind of hurts a lot too, Charles, and, and uh, I think, you know, and that's what doesn't happen on the east side where uh, a lot of these teams on the east have lost a bunch of players um, in a senior class before. You know, all corn, we lose 26 guys in one year in a class, and, and that's a big blow to you when you lose uh, 26 seniors. And then you come back, and, and this following year we have right at 12 uh, this year, so it'll be better. Uh, we go out and get a good recruiting class to follow this class that's going out. And then you talk about you being more competitive because the following year you, you, your junior class is coming up strong, and, and they've been here and done that. So uh, we're looking forward to better things, and as are all other teams in the East. Um, you know, have been in that situation too. So you look at it that way and you, and, and you go out and recruit um, the guys you lose. I, I kind of look at the uh, SWAC baseball analogy. Alabama State had a coach who just won the championship, Coach Melendez. He left to go to Florida International. When he came to Alabama State five years ago, he brought 17 freshmen with him. They all kind of grew up together. They got better together. There wasn't a lot of guys leaving to go to his draft, go to the draft, the exception of the last couple of years. You almost have to have that to have almost a perfect storm. So there's going to be players transferring in and out. You're going to lose seniors, guys leaving the program, and just trying to make it and mold it together despite those things happening. Every program has them. That's tough. That is. And when you, when you build a program like that, when you have those kind of players in, when you have that class as a freshman class, uh, which we had, we came in here at Alcorn, we had a freshman class, the class that graduated last year, of the old guys that, that, that played together for four years and you go from four and seven to nine and three yeah. to nine and three in the SWAC championship and then 10 and three to a SWAC championship and you got those same guys playing and they, you know now when you lose those guys it's always like uh oh we lost a class of kids and that was pretty good for four years together so that was that, that's the difference in, in, in the program when they on the uprise Charles the old kids that are freshmen they play together for four years. Were you ever concerned during the course of this season when it was really, when it really was tough, losing guys, losing games? Was it, were you concerned, man, I don't know if we can get over this steep hill? That's the biggest thing, too, as a coach. You, you hate to see injuries, and you always wonder when we're going to get these guys back, but you always have that in your back of your head. Is this going to continue to happen? Can we, can we really get over the hump? And stuff like that, and, and we fought through it, Charles, and um, did everything we could as a staff to keep it together, and we did. So, um, under all the other circumstances that, that that happened to us, you know, we still was able to come and, and fight through this, um, fight through it all, and, and win these. I go back the three top teams in the league: Grambling midway through the third quarter, a five-point game; Southern lose by eight; Prairie View were there till the very end. Uh, so you look at the three top teams, we make five more plays, we probably win two of those games. Yeah, and, and you look at a charge, and, and that's what you talk about, possessions. Uh, you have turnovers. You lose a possession now. You, you have a chance to score, but you don't because of interception or formal, or you turn over on downs. And, and that's what the things that happened this past weekend against Valley. We didn't have those except for the first drive. We had one turnover, but we were able to sustain drives and score touchdowns. And, and any time you have possession like that, the opportunity for you to score, you have to make the best of it. And um, in those games, Prairie View, Southern, and Gremlin, we didn't take advantage of the opportunity that we had to score, score a touchdown, and, and that was our coming old ball game. And we're just right there with them. I want to put a cap on the Valley game. Pickett White got in the ball game. Talk a little bit about uh, what he brings to the table. He's our holder, and I know you didn't, you didn't want to bring in the, the other kid that 
that uh, you may be able to hold out a bit. But talk about Pickett White and him getting an opportunity. You know, that's the thing to Pickett White. He, he's, he's an athlete, and, you know, when he, when he left the quarterback position, and, and that's something that, that always kind of stick with you, Charles, because I've done it when I play quarterback to receiver and back and forth. You never lose that knack uh, to play that position. And, and when we talked about it through the week and we just kind of like told him that, you know, you have, may have to go in if you, if you get out of hand or something like that, be the emergency guy. And then um, just being, uh, being there and just watching him play with the excitement that he brought to it at the end there was really good to see him do that, uh, give him an opportunity to make some plays. And uh, we also talked to the young quarterback about, you know, it's going to be time <laughs> to work. You're going to have to play, but it won't be right now. We don't want to waste that red shirt year. Felix Harper. Have. Yeah, and yeah, Felix Harper. And he's going to be a good one, Charles. And uh, we just got to keep molding him the way we want him to play. I think, you know, after everything's over with, he's going to be a good quarterback. All right, we'll take a time out here. Let's turn our attention to Jackson State. We'll do just that on the other side of this one-minute timeout on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Attention, 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 all Court State University family and our listeners in the surrounding areas. It's that time again. That's right, it's time now for the WPRL 91.7 FM Christmas Toy Drive. It's our fourth annual Christmas Toy Drive coming up. Hi, I'm Jay Miles Sr., one of Santa helpers of WPRL 91.7 FM, and I would personally like to ask you to help us again this year to put a smile on a little boy and little girl's face in the Jeffers and Cleveland County areas. It begins November 15th through December the 21st. And as usual, toys can be dropped off here at the station Monday through Fridays, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or for pickup, call 601-877-6290 or 601-877-6594. You can send me an email to jmiles at allcourt.edu and we'll be glad to pick up your toys. Thank you in advance. Please help us to make this year toy drive great. All right, welcome back. 6.54, before we turn our attention to uh, Jackson State. Coach, you always give credit to your assistant coaches. And the tweet just came in from TJ Mayfield. Coach, what can you say about the resiliency of your coaching staff? Well, I'll tell you, you know, um, you know they, they bend but don't break, you know. So, you know, all the stuff that that been thrown out of man, uh, and they still here, man. And, uh, you know, and I, and I credit those guys, man, those guys that, have done a great job in, um, of coaching these kids up to, to where we can be able to come back and fight for another championship charge. And, and uh, you know, they, 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 they're probably about like me, probably about, about stressed out a little bit and, and, and some of the things that you have to go through as a coach uh, with players and stuff like that. But after all in all, Charles, they, they've been great. And, and like I said, they they, they, they they tough and and they're going to do whatever it takes to get the job done, uh, no matter what it is. Uh, um, they will get the job done. All right, let's talk about Jackson State, Coach. This team was eliminated with the loss to Alabama A&M. Uh, this team started out with the loss to ULB, UNLV, Tennessee State. Then they lost to Grambling 35-14. They beat UAPB. They beat Valley. They lost to Southern by four. They lost to Prairie View by 14. They lost to Bama State and A&M by seven points. This team's had some issues staying healthy at the quarterback position. Uh, Marikawa. Uh, got to start the other day against A&M, over 1,000 yards passing. They've had Brett Lyles, who I've heard uh, is going to be pretty good at Jackson State. Lamontez Ivy started the season defensively. It looks like Jackson State has found some things. So what do you say about this JSU ball club as they come in here on Saturday? Uh, they are a very talented team, Charles. And, uh, you know, you can see signs of it, you know, by watching them on film, uh, the things that they can do that's really good. Uh, offensively, you know, the concept of what they're doing on the offense with, with the empty formations and, and all the stuff, the inside zone, and, and uh, they have a really good running back in Jordan Johnson. Uh, he's, he's carried over 500 yards right now. Um, you got Bates at the running back position, and uh, no guys like that uh, been been pretty good. Even the quarterback, you know, he's throwing the ball really well, getting it out real quick, and receivers, you know, Dan Williams and, and Maul. You know, those guys are very good, Charles, and um, you know, we got to do everything we can on defense to, to rally those guys and rally our troops around and stop those guys. And on the defense side of the ball, they got Javancy Jones. You know, he's a he's a swag guy, all swag player, 74 total tackles right now. And uh, even Kent Anderson, uh, both of them defensive end, I think they play Javancy just about anywhere he want to play uh, because he's that type of player. But, you know, offense, we just got to be well aware of where those guys at and so we get the right play call. And, 
and do the things we need to do to execute on offense. Jackson State is just, you know, I look at the Tigers in, you know, the last few weeks. I mean, they've been right there. You know, Prairie View 28-14, they were right there. It's 14, how often do you have a 14-7 game in this league? That's what they had. They, that's what they lost to Alabama State by 14-7, to 27-20. But you can throw all that out the window, you know, because we know this rivalry. What is the – we talked about the Valley rivalry, what it meant to you. What does the Alcorn jackson rivalry mean to you? Now, this is almost like the, the granddad of them all. So, <laughs> you know, Mississippi. <laughs> this is where it's at. So, uh, yeah. you're talking about a big rivalry here. And, and, and like I said, it's a good thing that's on campus, Charles. And, and uh, blessed to have it back here on the – on our own camping ground, they yeah. always call it the reservation. So, um, but we, it's a big game for us, and uh, I think the kids are, is um, is up for it. And um, and like I said, they know the magnitude of this ball game is going to be high, and and um, just to make sure that you know we bring everybody out um, to be very supportive of this all corner State and Western Brave uh, football team uh, this weekend because it's going to be a good one. It's going to be exciting. Um, just got to come out and play a class ball game and. And make sure we um, come out with a victory. Tell you what, you don't have to worry about coaching them up this week, do you? No, you really don't, Charles. That's one thing I talked about during the meeting earlier. You know, I shouldn't have to say too much this week. So, those guys know, and I think after I said that, you know, the room has kind of had an outbreak. So, you know, they, they know what's at stake here. All right, Coach, we appreciate it. Let's go get them. We will have a show next week to put a capper on Jackson State. And then, of course, we'll have a championship show coming up in two weeks. Wish you the best of luck for Saturday. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it, man. All right, so we will have a Fred McNair show ready uh, next week. We'll talk about the Jackson State game, recap the regular season, and then two weeks from today, we'll have a Fred McNair championship show edition. We'll preview the Braves' opponent, the 2016 SWAC championship game. It'll either be Grambling or Southern. Appreciate the tweets and the phone calls. Talk to us next week on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Don't forget Braves basketball Thursday and Friday. The Lady Braves playing Central Arkansas. The men playing Concordia College. I'm Charles Edmond. So long, everybody.